Hello, hello. Whoops. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Let's get the party started, everybody. All right, welcome. My name is Andrew Woodward, and if you have ever wondered how to waterproof your electronics, sort of a DIY deal, take your electronics and make them a little more waterproof so you can use them in places like greenhouses, grow rooms, things like that, you're in the right place. That's what we're going to talk about tonight and how you can do it yourself. In fact, we're going to do one on the air tonight. Yeah, let's just get at it. So anyway, my name is Andrew Woodward, and I'm the owner of Aero Grow, and I'm here with the Indoor Growing Show, and tonight we're showing you this waterproofing technique. One of many techniques that we found over the years is very useful uh, in and around wet environments uh, is to have some knowledge of how to get some, I'm going to call it waterproofing, but really what we're talking about here is not waterproofing proofing, quote, quote, uh, it is actually wa making a thing more water resistant is what we're talking about. If you've ever bought an electronic device like um, your, your, certainly your iPhone, uh, any like a digital watches and anything that's waterproofed as a matter of functionality uh, as a product, typically um, you'll see pretty clearly on the labeling that they'll give it an IP rating, like um, IP67, for example. And what that is, is that IP stands for ingress protection, right? It's that device's ability to resist the ingress of dust and water in particular. And to greater or lesser de degrees, the IP uh, scale tells you to what degree, greater or lesser, it will provide protection in that, for that device. Like, for example, uh, on the lower end of the scale uh, of waterproofness, you may be able to submerge the device for one foot for 15 minutes. I'm making up these numbers, but let's say one foot for 15 minutes underwater and after that it may start to get some water ingress right or if you go deeper than that than one foot you may have some water ingress uh, conversely you may have something that's like a diver's watch which says that you can have it uh, let's say at 300 feet for uh I don't know, three weeks, <laughs> and it'll remain waterproof. And uh, if you go a deeper than that or longer than that, perhaps not. So what we're doing, though, with electronics is we're hoping to... Well, we're hoping to splash proof them really is probably the best description that I could give you uh, because in, as you probably inevitably will find either find out or already know in a, a dark room, or dark room, I, I used to work in a dark room. I used to be in the photography, not a dark room, a grow room, quite the opposite. Something that's brightly lit uh, is a, uh, a grow room. A dark room is the opposite of that. Anyway, <laughs> I've played on both ends of the light spectrum. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So it's that kind of show. So uh, what we're looking to do is splash proof them, right? Because when you're in a grove room, you've you're, you're getting into the nutrient solution and stuff happens and you've got a, uh, let's say a pump system or whatever you might have in there that's running timers or pumps or whatever and, and water is splashing around and digital or not even digital electronics, any electronics with just a one drop of water properly placed on the board, that's it. It'll fry the, the, put the board or it'll, it'll zap something out or short it out or, or cause a, a problem of some sort or it'll, I've seen this happen too, where it'll trap itself under uh, let's say like a, a fitting and the electricity running through the wires underneath that fitting will actually cause electrolysis between the electrodes and actually cause corrosion and those those terminals will actually rust through before the device ever even shorts out so it'll actually rust itself to death because of that water I've seen that happen so we're hoping to prevent any of those sorts of things now one thing I want to caution you about and I'll get into this in a second is that some of these devices if this for example is an adjustable power supply Supply, where when you plug this in, you can then take a screwdriver and it has a little fitting on here that you can turn and you can adjust the, the output voltage of this device, right? A little bit up, a little bit down from its target voltage of, in this case, I think this is a 5 volt. 5 or 12, I don't, I don't remember. It's either 5 or 12, this one. Uh, and, and you can adjust it up or down a little bit. Well, when you're waterproofing, the way to, I'm going to show you how to do tonight, these little devices that turn, they're called potentiometers, those you do not want to waterproof because those need to remain turning. And this waterproofing technique I'm going to show you tonight is actually like putting liquid plastic on the electronics. And you don't want liquid plastic, as you can imagine, on something that you want to remain 
turnable or tunable or however you want to say that. Uh, you, you want to stay away from that. Uh, everything else is pretty much fair game. I'll show you where you pay attention to, you, where you need to be cautious. But that is what we're going to take a look at there. And uh, also, uh, these small electronics, these little timers and so forth, we're going to actually waterproof one of these on, on air. So if we take one of these apart, all right, let's go ahead and do this. Let's take this cover off here. And we take a look at what's inside here. And this is a uh, this is actually a brand new power supply that I just got a few weeks ago. I'm just converting it right now for use in the system. But um, uh, when we take a look inside here, there are several things that we want to make sure we cover really well with waterproofing agent. Now, what we're going to be using is called a conformal coating, and that's a fancy way of saying it's a oh, whoops a liquid uh, a liquid uh oh, where'd that screw go? Uh oh. <laughs> oh, it's st <laughs> it's stuck to the front of the uh, MacBook because they have magnets in the front of the MacBook. So uh, we're using a conformal coating. Okay, let me show you this on screen here. Hold on. Uh, here you go. Conformal coating. You too can own your own conformal coating. You can get this on uh, Amazon, wherever. It's uh, this one in particular that I like a lot. I use this quite a bit. It's made by MG Chemicals. I'll put a link for it in the description. It's 422C. This is a silicone based uh, conformal coating. And there are also acrylic based conformal coatings. In fact, I've got one right here. This is the 419D. This is the acrylic conformal coating, which gets a little harder. This uh, silicone based, it stays a little bit, um, I don't want to call it rubbery because it's not. It's hard to the touch, but it's a little more flexible uh, for, uh, I would imagine that's that's useful in uh, if you have a lot of temperature variants, like going down to freezing and then up into the 80s, something like that. A really wide temperature variant, you'd want something with a silicone base, just like you would with the caulking around your windows and doors. You'd want it to be silicone based to absorb that temperature fluctuation. I think that's why they're doing it in that case, but uh, you can use either one. Both will be effective in our application, either one is totally fine. Either the 419D or the 422C is fine for grow rooms and indoor situations, anything like that. Okay, so if we take a look inside the electronic device, I'm going to take a drink of water here. I have a really dry throat tonight. Sorry about that. I've been hiking through deserts. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. Inside here, this is just a basic power supply. We have our places on the end here where we connect our wires for our live voltage and then our wall, yeah, our sorry, our wall voltage goes into three of these. You have your load, your neutral, and your ground. And then you have your two outputs, your positive and negative for either your 12 volts or your 5 volts or whatever the device happens to be. And inside here, you have a little fuse somewhere, usually on the board. In this case, it's down here. You have a couple transformers, and you've got some capacitors, and then you have a whole bunch of of these surface mounted components, SMCs. And these, no, well, these are actually not surface mounted. These are pretty large. Surface mounted, in fact, we don't even have surface mounted on this one. Surface mounted are even smaller than these. Uh, these, are, these are top mounted components, but these are what we're targeting. So if we look closely, this one's already been coated. You can see the shiny stuff all over it. That's actually because it's been coated already. So if you look though, um, we're wanting to Take a brush like so, one of these doohickeys, and these you can I get these at, uh, what's it called, um, Harbor Freight, and I get them in packs of 100 for like five bucks, and these in combination with this bottle is what we use to put the goo on there, and all you do is, I'll just do a little demonstration here on this board, it's already coated, but hey, what the heck, you can never have too much protection, right? All right, well, it's just, so it's a, it's a you know, it's a liquidy sort of liquidy stuff. It's clear. It stinks to high hell. So don't do this without proper ventilation. Don't do what I do, in other words, because, yeah, I'm down here in the in the lab, and it's, it's yeah, I don't have the fans on right now. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little dicey. <laughs> I might start, uh, I might start passing out here in a second, but you just dip it in there, and then you go right over top of your components, and you don't have to push down very hard. You just sort of dab at it, and then you can see it flows into 
the crevices. That's the conformal part of that. It conforms to the shape of the components on the board. That's where that word conformal comes from. And you do want to stay away from anything that's removable, like a fuse or anything. Now, this fuse is not removable, so I'm going to go ahead and cover it. But uh, anything like a, a removable fuse, you want to leave, let it go uh, so that you can still remove it later. But otherwise, go for it. Dab it on there. Make sure you get it good and wetted down there. And you'll see, like it's a solid layer. And when you start running low, be generous. Go back and gather some more get it in there, let it flow, and you'll see it flowing, and you'll see if it doesn't. And if I have my, let's see, uh, oh yeah, I do. I'm going to show you a little trick in a second here. So that's how you do that. And you go around the whole board. Remember though, too, at the same time that you're going around the whole board, and I tell you to be th generous and thorough, remember, avoid anything that where there's going to be an electrical contact and avoid anything that needs to turn later in order to be adjusted anything like that everything else you can cover including by the way any of these wire packs any of these windings just go ahead dab it on there there's nothing wrong with that go ahead and waterproof the hell out of that and then you'll notice if now if you want to go all hog wild and crazy on this you can also separate this board from the casing the metal casing back and then you can have some fun by actually waterproofing the other side of it but i don't really think it's necessary because a drop of water is very unlikely to make a bridge between two of the larger solder connections on the back here especially when the water has to get all the way back there i mean this part's exposed this this covers on here water can go right through a drop and can hit something on the top of that board and our waterproofing will protect us from that but waterproofing the other side i'm not sure it matters it's up to you go for it if you want to be adventurous and bold and daring but me i've got better things to do but this side of the board always i do this for all my customers every piece of electronics that comes through here through aero grow that gets sold gets waterproof treatment there's no there are no exceptions to that because i've just discovered through the years that there's no sense in in not doing it it doesn't take that long it is an extra step it's labor blah 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 but and the product's a little pricey it's but not that bad but it's it's a it's a step that's worth doing so that's how you do that part that was just a quick demo on that box there but now let's do one for real so this is this is exactly what i would do when one comes in for a customer right i'm going to show you this timer and i use these timers all the time ah pun intended so okay we just take the uh wrap right. There is supposed to be a tear thing on it. Is it there? Oh, yeah, it was. It's in the fold. Okay, there we go. No, didn't work. They never work, these stupid tear packages. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's adult-proof packaging. I'm not allowed in. All right. Apparently, I'm too young. Uh, okay, let's go in here. Let me show you how this works. Should I do this? Yeah, I'll do this from the, the Skycam here. Let me turn that one on. So if we've got Skycam here, you can see this is a 12-volt timer, one of these typical timers you can get on Alibaba, AliExpress, whatever, whatever. And when they come in, what we do is pop off the, the top here delicately. Very de Everything should be delicate with these because, they, they yeah, they are pretty delicate and then you notice inside here there's a couple of tabs and this is very by the way the only reason I'm going through the trouble of explaining this with this particular timer is because most of the little electronic gizmos and gadgets that we use inside of the green room dar uh, dark room about to say dark room again inside of the greenhouse or the grow room uh, are going to be put together in a similar way they're going to have little tabs here that you could push to release the board and that's how you do I'm pushing from the other side and then I'm pushing with a screwdriver against the tab and just releasing it gently just gently just work it a little bit you'll see it that's it and it's released and then this comes right out there's a screen right that's a goes behind it and then you have the actual the actual ga 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 gadget or gizmo <laughs> the timer in this case and there's actually a plastic covering on here i go ahead and take this off because this is part of manufacturing and if i don't do it nobody will ever be able to because you actually have to disassemble this in order to take this plastic off and i don't want my customers to have to go through that so i go ahead and i remove it now and there we go. Now it's nice and clean and it's all high tech looking again. It's got that nice matte finish. That's what we want. So 
Also, again, I need you to pay attention to this. We have switches here. These do not get waterproofed. The digits do not get waterproofed. Nothing on this side needs to get waterproofed, including a little light bulb. There's no sense. There's no reason to do that. The only place you need to waterproof this at all is on the other side here. And here we do have what I was referring to earlier, surface SMC, surface mounted components. Those are these very, very small, you can see they're very small components that are mounted on the surface here. They're little transistors and resistors and maybe even some capacitors and who knows, all sorts of stuff on there. And then some integrated circuits. Yeah, we definitely want to cover those. All of those integrated circuits can get uh, really good protection. Those are the first things to go by, the way. When you get a drop of water that splashes on here, one drop of water will completely fry this thing just if it touches any of these pins here. That's just reality. That's how it is. So we're going to waterproof that. Here's what we do. So we take our con Conformal coating, blah, blah, let me get my angle there. There we go, conformal coating. And we go ahead and open that up. And we're going to take that brush from wherever. I mean, like I said, you can get them at uh, Harbor Freight, Home Depot, whatever, whatever. And we're just going to dip in there and we're going to go ahead and we're going to just put that right on the surface there and just let it flow. Just let it flow like that. Very easy to do. Don't overwork it. That's the worst thing you can do is to overwork it. Let it flow where it wants to go. Let it flow where it wants to go. I should trademark that. So that's how we do it. Just like that. Just get all that stuff covered. All those little surface mount components. Get them all covered, all groovy. Yeah, that's how we do it. Now, you're asking yourself, yeah, okay, I get it, I guess, but how can I be sure? How can I be sure that I really got everything? Tell me, Andrew, how can I be sure? I'm going to show you. Watch this. This is the magic part of our act. Okay, hold on. Let me just... Oh, God, these fumes are terrible. Um, you know what? I'm just going to close this up entirely right now because it is god-awful. And I'm getting a buzz here that's not a pleasant one. Okay. Uh, let's get rid of that. I'm putting that over to the side where it can't do any more damage to my brain cells. Okay, now, here's a trick. Hold on a second. I have to grab my, my stage prop. Okay. All right. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Batteries. Okay. All right. I'll show you this on camera, too, since you're already here. <laughs> I have a captive audience. This is an ultraviolet light. Now, yeah. What is so, so, so very cool about this is that conformal coating, at least, hey, I can only speak for the stuff from, uh, from uh, this, what the hell is it called? Uh, MG Chemicals. This stuff is amazing because it glows in the dark. It doesn't glow in the dark. It glows under a black light <laughs> or UV light. But that is super cool because you are able to see exactly where you have put the conformal coating and where you have not put the conformal coating and you can tell instantly now the trick is can i get <laughs> this flashlight to uh to work the first time because you really can't tell which way it's supposed to go here it's it's it screws me up every time all right let's see i might have gotten lucky tonight let's see if i got lucky I did not get lucky. All right. <laughs> Let me try it the other way. Good Lord. All right. So, uh, yeah, if we ever get our, uh, if we ever get our magic props uh, in order here, this is going to be a really cool trick. All right. Let's see. This will probably work. Yeah, I did put these on the charger because I was using this to find, uh, uh, oh, come on. Work with me here. Oh, no. So when I get this, thing working it's going to be super cool what is going on okay uh i might have put these batteries nope i'm pretty good about that let's see no nope, looks good looks good looks good 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 yeah uh, i think that's right yeah 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 that's right yeah all right, yep, good. Super duper. 
Hello, hallelujah. All right. So what's going on, man? Why doesn't this work? Huh. That's weird. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Sky cam. Take two. All right. Now, unfortunately, these lights, you know what? Let me kill these lights real quick. I want this to be as uh, dramatic as possible. I'm at least going to kill this one here. Okay. Yeah. Let me at least kill one of those lights. Check this out. Da, 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 da. Oh, let me see this. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. Hard to uh, pick it up well on camera, but let me see if I can get it. Yeah, this is so blaringly blue in, um, <laughs> it actually blinds out the camera. I'm having trouble getting it to, it's so bright that I'm having trouble getting it on camera. Um, but yeah, it shows you exactly where you put it. It's pretty cool. And uh, the kind of formal coating that I use does this. I don't know if all of it has this, this UV property to it, but this certainly does. And I just love the stuff. <laughs> it's on my hands too. <laughs> it's all over the place. Um, but yeah, that's how you test it in the end to see that you got it everywhere you need it to be. Then we'll take a look at this one here. And uh, this should be the same deal. It'll glow up like a, whoops, like a uh, LED panel. Check this out yeah there you go it's like crazy yeah it shows up everywhere and as far as i can see you know it with using my actual eyeballs uh there is nowhere that has been skipped here it looks like everything's been hit so it looks really good this is this is success this is a total success yeah it's even a little better than i expected it got underneath everything you yeah, know it's good it's good so that is how you test that now these these things are pretty cool, too. I'll actually put a link to that, too, on Amazon. I'm sure I got it on Amazon. I got it on Amazon. Like I get everything on Amazon, right? Am I right? You're probably the same way, I'm sure. So, uh, yeah, let me just uh, get these to the side. Let's talk about what can go wrong now. That is how you, well, put this together real quick while I've got you here. All right, so you just pop this because, actually, uh, if any of you have any of my Hang 10 devices, these are the timers that are used. Maybe you want to know how they're taken apart and so forth. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, now, I'm not going to remove this right away. There's another plastic coating on the front of this, and I normally do remove that for the customer as well, but I'm not going to do it yet because I'm not ready to assemble this. So I don't want it to get scratched ahead of time. So I'm going to leave that in place until I actually use it in a sellable unit and then i'll you know put it back together without the plastic covering so you put this back and normally this would be dried before i put it back in i'm doing this because we're on camera but i'm gonna put it back early pop that in place boom 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 like that that's it and then of course uh the opening here is for the connectors here so that just goes back in place very easily and there you go bob's your uncle your timer's back together and in about 45 minutes to an hour that'll be totally dry ready for action ready to be put back together uh it's totally fine ready to go as long as you don't touch it i did that's why i glow under a black light you know uh, as long as you <laughs> that's what happens there when you do it all too quick on camera but as long as you don't touch it uh you can put it back together and just let it sit there and dry for a while and then uh you know in an hour it's good to go so that is how that works and and now what can go wrong? Well, I'll tell you about, um, I don't know, what was about a year and a half, two years ago. I was working on this gizmo here that was, it's called a, it's still a product in development. I suppose I still consider it a product in development, but it's called a root defender. And the idea of this was that um, uh, UV light can, not this kind, this is a different wavelength, but UV light of, a, of UVC variety can be used to kill the types of pathogens and bacteria that typically lead to the uh, root rot that we experience as indoor growers. So putting a small uh, UVC germicidal lamp inside of a grow bucket, uh, e either inside of the root zone or inside of the nutrient tank seems like a really great idea. And, and I, it still is. It still feels like a really great idea. The problem is the waterproofing because what this is, is this is inside of this box here. And now this is a uh, prototype. That's why it's, it's all jungle wiry in here. It's crazy. It's like, what is that? That's like a rat's nest in there. So, hmm. Okay. Oh, my throat is really dry. So this is a, um, a 
12, well, 12 volts comes in here, and then this little unit is a high voltage transducer or transformer, rather. So it takes that 12 volts and it turns it into like, you know, thousands of volts, millions, maybe. Uh, I, I'm not even quite sure how many it produces in that, but, but very, very small amperage. I mean, it won't, you're fine. <laughs> There's no danger here, but it has to get that voltage up like in a, um, in the, uh, n the way that Nikola Tesla used to do it, you know, to b boost it up like that so that this type of bulb will glow because there's a gas in here, much like a, a fluorescent bulb or an, a neon bulb or anything like that. They're all filled with a gas, argon gas, all different types of, of exotic gases. And those gases, when they're exposed to electricity, glow certain colors, right? That's what makes these things work. This is the same way. You need a very high voltage. Well, I needed it to be waterproof and what had to happen here was I put the bulb inside of the glass tube the glass tube has a rubber stopper the rubber stopper has a hole in it where the wires come out you see the wires coming out of it there and then they go into the bottom of the unit they go up and into the unit and to the board, which has been, of course, waterproof, just like we do all the boards, right? It's in there. And what would happen, though, is, okay, so then I should describe how this is used. All right, so then you've got all that. And then your 12-volt adapter goes into here. And then this thing sits on top of your bucket, right, inside of a little hole. Basically, this just goes inside of a little hole, and it, it, it's, uh, it hangs inside of the bucket. And then it turns on every once in a while. It's on a timer. And that periodic cycling lights it up and kills all the bad stuff inside of the bucket. That's that's how this works. And it just does that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, theoretically. But what was happening is that I had some water ingress inside. I, th I think it must have just come through the opening where, it's hard to show here, but the opening where the wire goes into the little rubber grommet. I think, I think that's where it was sneaking in, but it's hard to tell because this was inside of a bucket. And I mean, it could have just easily been sneaking around the Right, right at the connection where the rubber grommet and the glass meet and then trickling down over a long period of time. I don't know. But the thing is, I kept coming back like a week later or something. I'd leave it abandoned. I'd come back and I'd take a look at it and it would be filled with water on the bottom here or inside of the glass tube. Just craziness. And I'm trying to figure out how the hell that's happening. I still don't know for sure, as you can tell, exactly what's happening with this. But anyway... The only place I was able to achieve the waterproofing that ever mattered at all in here was in the electronics. These electronics are great. I could I could probably submerse this and it would still work. Seriously, I put a lot of waterproofing on that. I, not that I'm recommending that. That's dumb. But and also because I don't actually put the waterproofing on connectors, so it, they would not be protected. But the board itself, you know, usually I coat these things so well that. There, you know, I'm not going to call it waterproof, but it's very heavily water resistant. <laughs> so that's a, that's a good thing. But it didn't work, not yet anyway. So I'm still trying to perfect that. But uh, hey, if anybody out there has an idea about how to get that perfected, let me know. So that's what can go wrong. That's a good example of what can go wrong. Anyway, lots of things can go wrong. But here's something else. Uh, now, this is an example of it going right, uh, but this is in a commercial product. Um, this is the, the five and one meter that, that our family sells on, on Amazon and on the Aero Grow store and so forth. And it's used, you know, it's the five and one meter. It's used for everything and in indoor growing and it is waterproof. Uh, the five and one is anyway, this one is. And uh, the way that they do it is the way that most electronic devices do it, including watches and things like that, divers' watches, is they use rubber grommets. Now, in order to get there, we go, that black grommet right there that's your waterproofing gasket that's your waterproofing grommet because that's where the probe meets the device right so when you push this down and oh and then you know inside there are little electronic terminals that's very prone to damage if any water got in there right it's so it's right there but when you put this together and it only goes together one way then you've got your little rubber grommet piece there. And now when you put your retainer cap on here, the inside of the retainer cap will push up against that rubber grommet. And when you screw the threads tight, the rubber grommet will get squished between the two flat surfaces. And that will create 
your water fastness. And this is actually IP67. This is actually protected against water and dust. And the same thing is done on the top here. If you take a look, there's your grommet or your, your O-ring is what it is. And it goes around the entire battery compartment, seals it up. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind with any kind of waterproofing like this that's built into devices, always make sure that the O-ring sits flat and level. It's not all twisted and mangled or anything because that's your waterproofing. It has to sit very flat. And then when you put your cap on here, everything should go back together nice and smoothly. Some of these O-rings do like a little bit of Vaseline on them. Some do not. Depends what kind of O-ring you have. Um, Vaseline will actually eat uh, uh, um, certain certain types of rubber products, but um, but it is recommended on others. So it depends what yours is made of. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations. Um, in this case, no, we don't use any Vaseline on this. Uh, doesn't need it. It's it's totally secure without it. But uh, let's see here. What else can I show you? Okay, so waterproofing also can involve some of this good stuff, clear silicone, as you know from the you know, any, any box store sells this stuff. They probably sell it at the grocery store actually. This is an old dried up tube. It's the only one I could find on short notice <laughs> for the show tonight. But uh, this clear silicone can be used for a lot of situations where you have, let's say, here's an example, just like uh, a year and a, no, this would be, no, this is going back some years, probably five or six years ago. Maybe even longer than that. Probably longer than that. We got ourselves an, uh, for Christmas an outdoor um, electric movie screen. It goes down. It's in a big, long black tube, essentially. And then you hit a button or with a remote control, you can make it come down. Right? One of those. Well, it's indoors. It's not an outdoor device at all by any means. It was never intended to be, right? But... Basically, I just I took a look. I needed it to be outside because I wanted to hang it from the from the outside porch, and I noticed that this long black metal box was just basically a long black metal box with a long seam that ran along the entire top edge of the of the unit, and then a couple of places on the sides where potentially in a rainstorm I could see some water getting in maybe. But I figured, you know what? If I just like loosen up the screws a little bit around the casing of the whole thing, right? Strategically, not all at one time, you know. <laughs> You don't want it falling apart, but you know, take take like the all the screws out for one of the edges of the casing, and then I'd lift it up, and I took some of this stuff, and I shot a bead of silicone along the entire inside lip of that case, and then I opened the end screws on the on the end of the casing, and then I shot some inside of that, and then I tightened them back up. Went to the other side of the case, the same thing. So if you work your way around and you use this liberally and correctly, you can create a waterproof case out of a non-waterproof case if you if if it's a basic case if there are restri i mean there, there there are limitations i mean it depends if if the case is too complex in its shape and design and so forth it's going to be a lot harder to to get this to go where you need it to go if the box is very basic like with an outdoor movie screen in that case it was it was very basic you can just line those seams and you'll be good to go it's also good by the way if you're doing any sort of uh, battery boxes for uh, electric vehicles or if you're doing any sort of control boxes for electric vehicles anything where you're working with electric vehicles because they also need to be more or less waterproof um, so that you can drive in the rain uh, and so they can take uh, splash splash protection like from just like you would anything that we're building you know you want that splash protection so that's another reason this uh, another way that this can be used so silicone is your friend uh, you don't have to use it in this form you can buy it in the big tubes that you use to squirt silicone around the house around your windows and doors and a caulking caulk gun uh, you get big tubes of it for I don't know eight or ten bucks or something probably I, I have it looked in a while but uh, I usually don't use it in this form I usually use the bigger tubes because uh, it's a little I just it's easier to control with the gun I think um, but uh, yeah you can get get a uh, couple different varieties of this stuff this one's made by Loctite but they all work equally well as long as oh by the way as long as it is clear silicone 100% silicone otherwise like there's all like transparent there's all sorts of other stuff that's being added to these products that makes it the, its performance less. Get the transparent silicone. That's what you want for waterproofing purposes. Okay. Now, in a few minutes, we're going to take a look at the Hawaii uh, indoor high pressure aeroponics 
system. That's a lot of words. <laughs> and the one we're going to be taking a look at is actually for Marlon. It's for a customer of mine um, working with Marlon. And he is building a system where he's using four by eight beds and he wants to aeroponically hydrate them and have this whole thing on a cycle cycling system. And he wants to use my control system to do it. So the Hawaii is going to be his system. Now I'm going to have my wife Stacy assisting me tonight on the camera because uh, there's no other way for me to do this. I'm going to have to go over to, come on down. You're going to have to go over and um, uh, demonstrate a couple of things. And Stacy will be working the camera. Not quite yet. Hold on just a sec. <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you a couple things on there that were waterproofed and, and why you would want to do that and how you would want to mount them. And we'll take a look at that. And Marlon, if you are watching, I don't know if you are or not, but if you are, this is the unit that is soon going to be yours. I'll show a, a few of the features to you as well as I go along. Now, I'm um, going to be using a different microphone. I need to turn that on right now. I'm also going to take another drink of water because I sound like I've been walking the desert for three days. So hold on one second. Okay, turned on the microphone. Now we're going to turn off the, uh, there we go. Hopefully everybody can hear that. I have my wireless on. Um, yeah, I see the audio going up there. I think I'm okay. Okay. Oops. Too much. Wait, let's see. Turn it down a little bit. Yeah, right about, probably right about there. All right. So if I click this over to Stacy. There we go. All right, Stacy, you can grab that camera. There she is. <laughs> She's saying hi. So I'm going to, whoop, uh-oh. Hold on a second. Okay. Hold on, everybody. We have a little technical problem. Our wire came out. <laughs> uh, hook this up. Okay. Let me just make sure that's back on. Uh-oh. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, no, that's not going to come back on for us. Okay, um, yeah, all right. Uh, boy, we always seem to have a technical problem here. Let me see if I can get this going. Switch mics back a second for a moment here. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this going or not. It was mounted up on a tripod and the wire popped out when we were attempting to uh, get it unmounted or dismounted from the tripod. And now it doesn't want to connect again, which is very strange. I've never seen this happen before. Geez, I really wanted to show you this tonight. Uh, that's the second time I've been thwarted from showing you this online. It's really interesting. All right, HDMI in. Let's try that again. Uh, damn. No, this is just not playing. It's not playing with us tonight. I don't know why. I would have to. Uh, I would have to disconnect the board to do that to get it to play, and I can't do that because I'd kill the show. So. Guess we're not doing it. All right. Uh, thank you anyway, Stacey. I will be back up in a little bit. I guess we're not going to take the tour of the Hawaii. Okay. Well, in that case, that is all I have for you tonight. I'm going to switch over to, uh, let's see. Yep. Uh, looks like we lost our focus as well. Okay. I'm going to uh, call it a night. So thank you. Thank you for checking this out. Waterproofing, uh, some, some ways you can waterproof your electronics. Hopefully that has been helpful. If you did enjoy this video, please remember to like and subscribe. We're going to show you all sorts of cool stuff on the channel here, such as waterproofing and every other thing you can think of. And um, on that note, do let me know in the, in the comments if you would like to see some more uh, different types of waterproofing, different types of devices or anything of that nature let me know and in the meantime go grow something and next time we're gonna hopefully be able to showcase this hawaii and i'll be able to show you some things on it that i think you're really gonna like so have a great week and i'll see you in a couple weeks take care bye yep i can't believe that just happened yep <laughs>